Ooh. Um, let me grab the hat. Hey there everyone, this is Scott with Hilux Optics. Now if your eyes are automatically drawn to this beautiful rifle in my hand right now, I wouldn't blame you. This is a Winchester Model 1873, colloquially known as the gun that won the West. It has a pedigree lineage the likes of which you might not even believe. Way back in the day, this started off on a foundation of the Volition Rocket Ball. That was ammunition that actually had the propellant inside the lead. Pop a percussion cap on that, and there you go. That featured a ring lever mechanism. You pull that ring and it goes through all the actions. Well, it wasn't too long after that that a fella named Henry got involved. Did you do that? There's a fly and I accidentally moved. <laughs> Sorry folks, we're filming this in the desert right now and there is some natural wildlife going on trying to disrupt our shot. But don't worry, we're here for you. This rifle originally got its first changes from old Mr. Henry, who might be famous for other lever actions that he made. Past Smith & Wesson and Henry, we arrive at Oliver Winchester, where all of this rifle finally comes together. Let's first point out, this rifle fires centerfire ammunition. Now they might, that might not sound surprising to you, but back in the day, that was a major change to the whole game. On top of that, they had a separate trigger here. The original lever actions, you pull a ring through the entire process, but this, you cycle the action with the lever and you fire when you're ready by pulling the trigger. Past that, we have the toggle link action. This isn't the kind of action that you might be familiar with on modern falling blocks, modern lever actions, uh, anything that's semi-automatic, of course, is gonna look completely different. This particular mechanism, let's go through it. As you pull the lever, that's going to eject the rounds, load the next one in place, drop the block out of the way and lock it in. Then you pull the trigger and you're good to go. Let's take this off engagement right now. Another improvement that we see from Henry and Winchester days, we've got a loading gate back here in the receiver, which by the way, was massively important in times of battle. The ammunition it fired was 4440. That means it was a 44 caliber bullet with 40 grains of black powder behind it. And when you're unloading this throughout the heat of the day, that's gonna heat your barrel up like crazy. Not having to load ammunition down here saved you from burning yourself by accidentally touching the muzzle. And surprising as it may be, this wooden handguard was one of the most necessary improvements to make the 1873 possible. With this handguard here, it was so that you could load on a Sunday and fire through the rest of the week, and you're not gonna burn your hands while doing it. This rifle may not be the most powerful, it may not reach out to the greatest distance, but it did have a caliber of ammunition that matched up perfectly with the six shooters on your hip, and it could be used for anything out to 300 yards, firing rounds as fast as you could cycle that action. I know nowadays that might not seem like the most surprising thing, but 150 years ago, tromping through the Wild West, this might have saved your life. Let's go ahead and get this sighted in and shooting with our six power two-tone Malcolm scope, a scope that came about at roughly the same time as this rifle. These started being made in 1855. This rifle got its chops in 66 and got finalized in 73. So I say, this is a match made in heaven. A big thank you to Taylor and company for sending this rifle out our way so that we could give it a nice test out under the desert sun of sunny Southern California. Hope you join us in the next video as we fire some rounds through this thing hand loaded by our very own Italian grandpa, Leo. Hope you all have fun out there. Enjoy whatever it is you're shooting.